There's a chapter in the Bible that, in my opinion, one, shows the error of Scripture alone, and two, when properly examined, reveals that the Catholic Church is the true church. Now, there are many verses in the Bible that disprove Scripture alone and show that the Catholic Church is the true church, but 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is the most interesting. If you've watched my videos, you've seen me use 2 Thessalonians 2.15 as a proof text against Scripture alone. So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by letter. But that's not what I want to focus on. I want to focus on the restrainer that Paul discusses in 2 Thessalonians, he who restrains the Antichrist. Although Paul doesn't call him the Antichrist, he calls him the man of lawlessness and the son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 8. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you this, and you know what is restraining him now, so that he may be revealed in his time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who restrains it will do so until he is out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed. Here Paul says that something and someone is restraining or preventing the Antichrist from appearing on the scene. Verse 6, you know what is restraining him, a thing. In verse 7, only he who restrains it will do so until he is out of the way, a man. Some translations say until he is removed or taken out of the way. But the question is, who and what is restraining the Antichrist? The fact that we have to ask that question shows the error of Scripture alone, because the Bible doesn't say who and what it is. And if you say that's because it's not important, Paul thought it was important enough to remind the Thessalonians of it. He just didn't want to say who and what it was in the letter, which actually gives us a clue to what the answer is. Also, it's just a few verses later that Paul tells the Thessalonians to stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by letter. So it is actually important. Now, Protestants vary on what they think the answer is. Some say the preaching of the gospel, others say the binding of Satan, or the providence of God, the Jewish state, the church, the Holy Spirit, or Michael the Archangel. Among evangelicals, the most popular answer is the church, their understanding of it, and the Holy Spirit. And the taking out of the way or removal of the restrainer refers to a pre-tribulation rapture. But taking into account 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 from the beginning disproves a pre-tribulation rapture. Now concerning the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ, and our assembly to meet him, rapture, we beg you, brethren, not to be quickly shaken in mind or excited either by spirit or by word or by letter purporting to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day, again the rapture, will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of perdition. So the rebellion of the falling away and the persecution of the church and the revealing of the Antichrist come before the gathering or the rapture. So if it's not referring to the rapture, who and what will be removed to reveal the Antichrist? Well, here's the thing. The one true church knows the answer. It says so right in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Do you not remember that when I was with you, I told you this, and you know what is restraining him now, so that he may be revealed in his time. Paul told the church orally who and what the restrainer is. This, of course, was passed down generation to generation, as Paul instructed in 2 Thessalonians 2.15. To find out, we need to see who and what the early church believed the restrainer was. And if we read the early church fathers, men like Tertullian, Lactanius, and John Chrysostom, we see that the restraining force is the Roman Empire, the what, and the restrainer is the Roman Emperor, the who. Even Augustine writes of this. This would explain why the apostles kept it as an oral tradition rather than writing it down. There would be no need to hint at it saying, you know what I'm talking about, if it was the Holy Spirit or any of those other ideas. 
Paul would just come out and say it. But if Paul had said the empire and the emperor in his letter, and the letter ended up in the hands of the Roman officials, he could be charged with treason for saying that the empire and the emperor would one day be removed or cease to exist. Now, I know what you're thinking. It can't be the Roman Empire and the Emperor because the Roman Empire fell in the 5th century. There hasn't been a Roman Empire or a Roman Emperor for over 1,500 years. Actually, that's not true. The Western Empire fell 1,500 years ago, but the Roman Empire in the East went on for another 1,000 years until the Ottoman Empire conquered it. We call that empire the Byzantine Empire, but that's just what historians call it. They never stopped calling it the Roman Empire. And the Western Empire was revived under Charlemagne as the Holy Roman Empire, which lasted until the middle of the 19th century and sort of became the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The last Holy Roman Emperor was Blessed Charles of Austria, who abdicated his throne in 1918. In the East, the daughter of the last emperor married the Russian king. Since she was the only imperial remaining, the throne passed through her to her son, who then became the Roman Emperor. It's why the Russian king is called Tsar. It means Caesar. And of course, you know the last Russian Tsar was murdered in 1918. So as you can see, both halves of the empire and both emperors lasted in some form until 1918. But since the Antichrist is a man, he obviously has not yet been revealed. So what does that leave restraining the Antichrist now? The only Roman Empire and Roman Emperor left, the Roman Catholic Church and its ruler, the Pope. The only thing left restraining the Antichrist is the Pope and the Catholic Church. And in case you haven't noticed, they're not doing so good. Oh, you think that's a stretch? Well, consider this. Let's look at Daniel chapter 2. This is the famous dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had that all his advisors could not interpret, but Daniel could. Daniel says to the king, Your majesty looked, and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous, dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partially of iron and partially of clay. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were all broken into pieces. But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. Daniel interprets the dream. He says to King Nebuchadnezzar, You are the head of gold. After you, another kingdom will arise inferior to yours. Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule all over the whole earth. Finally, there will be a fourth kingdom strong as iron. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all the kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. The dream was of four kingdoms, Babylon, the Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and Rome. We know that the last empire, the feet and legs of iron and clay, is Rome because the text says, in the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. It was under the Roman Empire that Christ established his kingdom. Now let's look at the rock. Daniel 2, 34 and 35 says, A rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay. And then it says, But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. In other words, the rock will be thrown into Rome during the reign of the kings that God will establish his kingdom, which will smash the kingdom and become a mountain and fill the whole earth and never be destroyed. Now let's look at Matthew 16, 18. Jesus says to Peter, And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Here we find out that Peter, which means rock, is the rock that was not cut by human hands. Daniel says that the rock will be thrown into Rome, and from there become a mountain and fill the whole earth. And as we know, Peter established the Holy See of the church in Rome. Now, let's look at Daniel chapter 7. Daniel has a dream of four beasts. The four beasts represent the same four kingdoms as the statue with Rome being the fourth beast. So let's look at the fourth beast. Then I desired to know the truth concerning the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrible, with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze, and which devoured and broke into pieces and stamped the residue with its feet, and concerning the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up and before which three of them fell. 
the horn which had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things, and which seemed greater than all its fellows. As I looked, the horn made war with the saints, and prevailed over them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given for the saints of the Most High. And the time came when the saints received the kingdom. And thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be greater than all the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it into pieces. As far as the ten horns out of this kingdom, ten kings shall arise, and another shall arise after them, he shall be different from the former ones, and shall put down the three kings. He shall speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change the times and the law, and he shall be given into his hand for a time, two times and a half. But the court shall sit in judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away, to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Their kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey them. So here we see that Rome will make war with the saints, but in the end, that kingdom will be given to the saints. So as we know, Rome persecuted the church beginning with Emperor Nero, the horn that seemed greater than all its fellows, for almost 300 years until Emperor Constantine ended the persecution in 313 and Christianity was made the official religion of the empire in 380 AD under Emperor Theodosius I. So according to Daniel, the church will inherit the Roman Empire, which it did. That's why the church is in Rome and not Jerusalem, and that's why it's called Roman. But doesn't the First Vatican Council say that the Catholic Church and the papacy will be here until the end of time, and that the Pope will have successors until the end of time? If that's true, how can they be removed, revealing the Antichrist? I think the answer is this. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians that the rebellion or apostasy, the great falling away, will come first. We all know that in the end times, the church will be reduced to a remnant and driven underground. Not because most of the church will be raptured, but rather the majority of the church will apostatize or fall away, and the world will turn on the church and the pope, causing the pope to flee Rome. Perhaps an anti-pope will be in Rome while the true pope is driven off. There's all kinds of possibilities. We won't know for sure until it happens. But the point is this. The Catholic Church is the church. It inherited the Roman Empire and spread all over the world, becoming the most influential institution in the world, just like Daniel said it would. But at some point, it will be driven back underground and its influence will disappear. Then sin and lawlessness will reign, paving the way for the Antichrist. Until my next video, God bless.